Welcome to a new video on tutorialspedia.com YouTube channel. In this video, I'll be talking about event driven architecture and I will be explaining some of the basics associated with event driven architecture. Let's talk about the topics that are going to be covered in this video tutorial. First of all, before I discuss about event driven architecture, I will have a high level overview of events in general to make the basics clear that what exactly an event is. And then we will be talking about what is event driven architecture and how event driven architecture works where I'll be also talking about some of the basic players which are involved in event driven architecture. And last but not least, uh, we will be covering some of the benefits associated with event driven architecture. First of all, let's talk about events in general, what exactly events are. So uh, the example uh, examples uh, that I'll be giving here will make it more clear for you. And if we talk about events in general and define it, event is any action that happened which changed something. So event when occurs makes some changes for which some other parties are interested. So anything that happens on a certain object and some changes do happen on that object which are relevant for other parties, they trigger an event. Let's talk about this based on some examples so that the concept gets more clear. Let's talk about a system uh, in any retail store where an order has been placed online. So once an order has been placed, it means an action has happened on a certain object. In this case, the object is the order. So once an order has been placed, then there, there are many other systems or applications within the ecosystem of an organization which are interested to know about that event so that they can take necessary actions to uh, process that order, to execute that order and to uh, to start the shipment of that order so in this situation the generation of a new order a placement of a new order generates an event and once that event is triggered then different other systems and applications are intimated using that event driven architecture the, another example is that an incident happens in an organization we have incident management system where uh, once an incident happens then there are certain other applications and systems and some stakeholders who are intimated and informed about that incident so that necessary corrective actions may be taken and a, a mitigation plan for that incident gets placed in this scenario based on that event. Another example is a shipment arrives for an organization or for a company and once a shipment is arrived then certain uh, actions need to be taken by different uh, departments within that organization and in this scenario an event gets triggered and based on that event those actions are triggered some more examples can be like a client registers on a web store of uh, a web of an application or for a company and once a registration has happened then there are some uh, actions that need to be done for that client uh, onboarding so that is another example of an event that happens. And another example that I put here is that a payment, once a payment gets received, then uh, based on that, some confirmations need to be done and some other systems need to be in, intimated and informed so that all the relevant information uh, about a particular order gets updated once the payment has been received. So these are just a few of the examples. There can be plenty of other cases where events uh, uh, do happen and events are triggered based on certain action so when we will talk about event driven architecture you will come to know that event is the primary uh, uh, player in any event driven architecture based application where all of the actions execute and all of the actions revolve around that event that has taken place now let's talk about how event driven architecture works in general so uh, if we talk about event driven architecture in general what exactly it is so it's a architectural approach uh, to design integration solutions which work on the principle of information flow based on certain events so we just saw some of the example events that can be uh, triggered so based on these type of events uh, we design an architecture where flow of information takes place from the event producers to the event consumers uh, based on this architectural style so if we talk about event driven architecture what are the key players which take part in overall architectural uh, design the first and key player is event producer whenever an event occurs event always occurs on a system uh, which generates a, 
message or which triggers an event so event producers are those applications or systems which are producing the event and they are the source so they are also known as event emitters in the in the case of uh, the example that we were just looking into if an order has been placed an order management system uh, is the producer in that scenario which triggers a new event to inform all the other systems about that new order that has been placed then the second key player for an event driven architecture is event consumer or event six these are those systems or applications which are interested in certain type of events as an example when a, in a crm system some of the information about a customer gets updated crm system as a producer produces a new event and then there can be a billing system there can be a campaign management system there can be some other systems uh, uh, within that uh, organization which are acting as event consumers in this scenario they want that information uh, which is sourced from the producer and then they want to update they want to process that event and based on the processing of that, that event they want to take some other actions within their uh, respective systems then there is another player another key player which is event broker event broker sits in middle between the producers and the consumer and event broker is responsible for routing filtering and all other necessary actions for error management for retry mechanism for how to do the distribution of these events how to do the uh, prioritization of these events so a lot of uh, actions that happen in between uh, producer and consumer those are being handled by the event broker sometimes we can have an a stream processor and sometimes we can have a, a traditional event broker or a message broker in between so it all depends on the scenarios some of the examples in case of a stream processing can be uh, like we might have apache kafka in between or we might have uh, jms in between as a message broker we might have active mq or rabbit mq so those are just some of the examples uh, i have already created some videos about uh, apache kafka rabbit mq active mq those videos also uh, in, uh, will be helpful for you if you want to understand how those brokers work i'll put the link of those videos in the description for you to reference another important thing for event driven architecture uh, as you can see here is that the uh, event producer once produces an event it sends or it publishes that event to a topic in the event broker and in case of uh, a stream processor there can be a commit log as well where these events are being published or written and then we can have n number of event consumers uh, which are interested in the same event as an example uh, if we talk about the some of the real time data let's suppose we have an application for the currency rate updates so producer is producing the information in real time or and uh, some specific intervals about the current rate of of uh, of conversion from usd to another currency like uh, from usd to euro or maybe usd to uh, british pound as an example so that information once published from the event producer is published to a certain topic and there are certain uh, consumers any number of consumers can be there which are interested to consume that information so they are interested in that set of information so as and when that event is published to that topic those consumer consume the message from the, that topic and then they process the information as and how they want so interesting thing is that consumer one might be uh, processing and filtering that information in a different way maybe it is going to uh, handle that event in a way that based on the information that is available in event uh, by using event driven architecture there can be uh, a, a soa based that is service oriented architecture based application within that event consumer which is going to call a service and get some more information uh, based on the information that has been already communicated through the event and then and there can be another consumer which might be consuming that uh, topic differently so it fetches the information from that topic and then it just uh, pushes it to an analytics or analytics based server or maybe it just makes it available into some of the log in logs or maybe it makes it available to some of the bas for the for the processing or it proce uh, processes information and pushes it to another system which is going to consume so there can be any type of implementation and any type of consumption mechanism on the consumer side for the information that has been published by the producer to a topic 
and the interesting thing about this is that uh, it is completely decoupled uh, in a situation where event producer once produces the event doesn't wait in any synchronous manner it's all asynchronous so event producer produces the message publishes it to an event broker and then it continues its other jobs it doesn't care who the consumer is, how they are going to consume it, when they are going to consume it. Although there are certain settings that can be done to make sure that any of the information which is relevant must be processed and must be made available only at the time when it is useful. Like uh, the example we just uh, talked about uh, the currencies uh, data, that's quite real-time data. So any information that is published by a producer, uh, it may be irrelevant after maybe a few minutes or a few hours. So it is important that this type of information is consumed by the consumer in, uh, in the earliest possible manner. So there are mechanisms uh, which can be handled, which can be con considered in this situation to make sure that some of the messages are prioritized and they are consumed by the consumer at, uh, as, as soon as possible. The second important thing is that uh, there can be any number of consumers in this case and some of the consumers might not be available. They might be busy processing some other requests. So all this can happen, but it is totally independent and decoupled from the producer and from the broker. So broker is sitting in between, producers are continuously producing the messages, pushing it to the topics, and consumers as based on as and when required and based on their own uh, capabilities, they are consuming the message, they are doing their internal uh, logic, they are doing uh, the processing the way they want, and then they continue getting more of the messages from the topics. So this whole architecture is uh, quite uh, uh, convenient in a way that it doesn't uh, uh, couple all of these systems and it doesn't uh, work like the traditional request response mechanism where everything is in a synchronous fashion. Client is making the request, waiting for the producer, uh, waiting, the wa waiting for the server to uh, return the response and till the time the client, is, uh, client request is, uh, is still uh, in the waiting state. And once a response has been received, uh, only then the connection gets closed. So that's a traditional request response architecture. But this architecture, that's event driven architecture, is totally different and it is mitigating and it is just uh, avoiding all of those hassles which are associated with the traditional re request response architecture. Now let's talk about event driven architectures uh, benefits which are associated with this architecture that why we should opt for event driven architecture when implementing our solutions. The first thing that I have already talked about is decoupling between the producers and consumers where producers and consumers which can be separate systems which can be separate applications. They are working independently at their own pace at their own preferences and uh, there is no um, synchronous uh, type of communication between the two and nothing is uh, uh, making any blocking uh, calls between the two. The second important thing about event-driven architecture is that it is highly scalable and distributed. Uh, in this case, uh, we can have a cluster where we, have, we can have multiple uh, brokers uh, uh, in a clustered environment. We can scale it up, we can scale it down depending on the technologies and topologies that we are opting for and it's highly distributed. We don't care that where exactly the client is sitting, where exactly the, uh, the server is sitting, that is where the consumers and producers are, what technologies they are using, how they are uh, dealing with the data and uh, how exactly they are linked toward uh, the broker. The important thing is that uh, we just need to make sure that the producers are able to connect to the, to the broker using the protocol that are offered by the, uh, the broker. And the second thing is that uh, consumers are able to consume the messages from the broker. That's all we uh, we care about and nothing else. Uh, it doesn't matter that client is uh, using which technologies, producer is using which technology, and also uh, it's highly distributed. And the level of distributed uh, uh, setup that we can make is totally up to us and we can always scale it up and scale it down. The third thing and the beauty of event-driven architecture is that it's highly efficient when it comes to the overall uh, data that is flowing through the network. Normally what happens is that uh, services uh, in service-oriented architecture contains a huge set of data which is uh, being pushed uh, uh, in the response for any request that happens. But in case of event-driven architecture, events generally contain a very limited information, only specific information that is relevant and second thing is that 
the 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 traffic that comes and that flows through the network is also limited means it's not a request response model the client the producer is just producing an event and pushing it to the uh, topic and then all of the consumers which can be n number of consumers are the subscribers they subscribe to same top same topic and they pick up the copy of the same message from the topic and then they process it the way they want it's totally uh, opposite to the traditional request response model where each of the client is supposed to make a request to the producer and getting the data back so the level of uh, network traffic that is involved in case of a service oriented architecture based uh, service uh, mechanism uh, and the level of traffic net network traffic that uh, flows in case of event driven architecture uh, there is no comparison between the two the the, the level of traffic and the uh, total, um, if we talk about uh, the size of the traffic that happens in case of event-driven architecture, is very low compared to service-based uh, integration. The next benefit or the beauty or advantage of event-driven architecture is that we have a better control. As I stated earlier, we can uh, do the priority-based uh, uh, message mapping. Uh, for example, when a producer is producing a message, Let's talk about JMS-based uh, messaging. In that case, we can set the priority of a message and then based on the priority, message delivery works. And then we can specify the expiration as well. And in case of expiration, we specify that this message should be expired in this much amount of time. And after that, uh, it becomes irrelevant and meaningless. So the broker is going to uh, handle uh, those messages the way we want, the way we want to prioritize it and the way we want to uh, set the expiry. So in this way, we can have a better control on the uh, level on uh, the flow uh, mechanism that we are going to use for the uh, information uh, that's passing from the producer to the consumers through a message broker. And another uh, benefit or advantage of uh, event-driven architecture is that we have an improved resilience. We can uh, manage how we are going to do error handling, how we can do retry mechanism, and this is an asynchronous uh, communication. So if once the producer has produced a message and sent it to a topic on the broker, then uh, some of the, uh, the subscribers or some of the consumers, even if not available at that time, they can connect anytime later before the expiration of the message and they can get it. And in case of uh, errors, uh, there are certain uh, mechanisms and certain features that we can set to do the error handling in a, in a better way compared to the typical uh, request response uh, invocation model. And retry mechanism is also supported in most of the brokers. We can specify how we are going to retry. And all these things help us to have an improved resilience for our applications and which have been integrated using event-driven architecture. So that's it from this video. I hope that uh, the concepts uh, would be clear for, for you uh, based on the information that I have shared in this video. I didn't go into the details and I wanted to keep this as simple as possible. If you want to learn more about integration in general and related topics, you can visit my website tutorialspedia.com. And for video tutorials, you can subscribe to my channel, uh, Tutorialspedia YouTube channel, where you will find plenty of videos about different technologies related to integration.